Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things related to narcissism and difficult personalities all along. Before I begin, I'd love to hear from you. In the comment section, I would love to hear if any of you believe in the concept of the twin flame. And if you don't know what it is, stay tuned because I'm about to explain it. In fact, I was going to kind of go all proppy in you and carry a candle, and but I don't know quite what that twin flame thing was going to do and I didn't want to set myself on fire. So I, I decided not to go with the candle, but I, I had a prop in mind. So I want to talk about this again. If you know anything about the twin flame and you know about narcissists, love to hear your thoughts below, but let's talk about this. Let's talk about this idea of how the idea of a twin flames can pretty much be a setup for getting into a narcissistically abusive relationship. Now, for starters, this idea of twin flames, it's a really romantic idea, okay? The idea of the twin flame is this idea that souls split into two pieces. Plato actually posited something along the lines that people, I think, are born with four legs and four arms, and then this splits into two beings, and your life becomes about finding that twin mirror soul. Basically, the belief is that half your soul is out there walking somewhere, and your life's quest is go find it back. Now, I always wondered about this too. Apparently, the number 1111, you know, like on the clock, 1111, everyone's like, you gotta make a wish? It has relevance to this, and I actually made the notes for this video on November 11th. On that day, I wrote it, and I read as much as I could about 1111 and twi Twin Flames, and the more I read about it, actually, I'll be honest with you, I got shudders, the more chilling it became to me. Now, as you can imagine, in my world of narcissistic relationships, and in a world where I, on the daily, hear many stories about what happens when people find themselves in these atten intense relationships where the people couldn't be discerning about their relationship choices, the idea of a twin flame is actually quite terrifying to me. And here's the reason why. In the various things people had written about a twin flame relationships, these are the kinds of things I was reading all over the place. These were people who had twin flame relationships. They said, we had a powerful connection. It was unlike any experience you will ever have again. It was that rare transformative soul connection it transformed me and yet it terrified me. We can only have one twin flame in a lifetime. My twin flame was magical and profoundly moving. And one article even listed the sort of multiple stages of the twin flame relationship. I'm not gonna get into all of them, but some of them included yearning for the one, meeting the one, an ideal relationship, turmoil, approach avoidance, surrender, reconnection. I was like, oh my God, I'm just reading about a narcissistic relationship with different words. There were a lot of other grandiose descriptions out there. Life feels whole with your twin flame. You never want to be anywhere else. I'm not kidding you. I actually cried that day. My heart sank when I read all of this because a lot of this kind of talk the magic, transformative, once in a lifetime, idealize, chasing, surrendering, earning, losing, rejoining. This sounds like the stages of a narcissistic relationship. You know that idealizing, devaluing, discarding, hoovering, all of that. What is even more unsettling is that this concept of a twin flame actually could play on the vulnerabilities of those who carry early trauma bonded experiences, right? People who are vulnerable to intense yet invalidating and volatile relationships that are often unresolved from earlier in life and can leave people feeling as though they are on some kind of quest to fill a yearning in their lives. This is literally a setup for this kind of magical ideation about the twin flame. Many people in narcissistic relationships justify the early toxic patterns and red flags on the basis of a magical connection, a once in a lifetime love story, 
I know it sounds irrational to you, but I've never felt this way before. I have never felt so understood. And even when someone on the outside points the red flags out to someone in a new narcissistic relationship, even when we give someone the trauma bond framework, the twin flame framework often wins out and it can become really quite problematic because a person in one of these relationships can get caught in that chilling idea. You can only have one twin flame in a lifetime. So I have to endure all this volatility because what if this is my only one? That's a real problem because if a person buys into this kind of thinking and uses the rationale of the twin flame framework that these relationships are supposed to be unsettling and volatile and perfect and otherworldly, that kind of basic roller coaster, because bringing your twin flame in is such a unique human relationship. It really captures that up, down and all around the sort of architecture of the antagonistic narcissistic relationship. The seductive idealized love bombing period is often a sweep you off your feet moment or at a minimum that part of your relationship where you feel deeply understood. When your narcissistic partner starts lashing out at you relatively early in the relationship or becomes hypersensitive or their, ver their empathy is up and down. Some days it's spot on, some days it's missing or they're inconsistent in their communication or you start thinking Jekyll Hyde stuff. Frameworks such as the twin flame framework can get weaponized by the narcissist who will tell you we're caught up in something so powerful that I'm just feeling really unsettled. You know what, baby, you're my twin flame, babe. This is once in a lifetime. I'm just so scared. So I'm not always at my best. And your trauma bonds may be ultra activated by all that approach avoidance in, out and all of that. And that fantasy, the once in a lifetime that you need to stick it out. It's not uncommon for narcissists to say things like nobody will ever love you like I do, or that this is a once in a lifetime love story, or this will never happen to you again. All of this kind of ideation can get a little bit espoused in this twin flame argument. Some of the language of the twin flame world kind of goes back to this idea of deja vu or the idea that our energy or we have somehow met before. This also gets tricky because this idea of some sort of metaphysical familiar familiarity, it's the hallmark of a narcissistic relationship. And it's often a sign that the trauma bond is being activated. Familiarity is actually really dangerous stuff. Lots of times when people say there's magic or past lives, or I loved you in a past life, or we have once in a lifetime chemistry, that's code for you may be evoking some of my unresolved dysfunctional early scripts and I'm getting blindly sucked in, in that way that only invalidation or gaslighting or conflict can just suck you right back in. Be very careful when you're thinking about a new, especially a new kind of unstable relationship, in terms of deja vu. Words like soulmate and twin flame carry danger in the world of the narcissistic relationship. They play on a theme of scarcity, the idea that you're never going to find this person again. And under conditions of scarcity, we often make very short sighted decisions that are not good for us. The twin flame community is going to argue that your twin flame may not necessarily be a romantic partner, but in fact, may be a friend or even a family member. It's not necessarily just a romanticized kind of ideal, but the same logic applies. The twin flame metaphor is potentially blinding by telling someone that they're in the midst of something uniquely transcendent, preternatural and almost mystical. It seems almost arrogant that even someone like me would roll in and say, you know, that I'm again, I'm arrogant or I'm ungrateful. It would be, and if you were in such a relationship, it would be ungrateful. 
to actually be bothered things like this person really is kind of not very punctual or they're kind of always looking at their cell phone instead of listening to me or they've been gaslighting me. Because after all, one could argue, well, they are your twin flame and they're a rare gift from the universe. And so because they're such a rare gift, twin flames are sometimes going to have rough patches. And all of us, since we were children, have had the fantasy, the hope, the desire to be the chosen one, the special one. Lots of the writing I've been reading about twin flames opine that not everyone will find their twin flame. So it becomes like Willy Wonka's golden ticket or maybe that old song lyric, like trying to find the Coupe de Ville and the Cracker Jack box. Bonus points if you knew who that artist who made that line was. Meatloaf. Yeah, Coupe de Ville and the Cracker Jack box, right? We want to be the one who finds the prize. We want to be the special one, the golden ticket. We want to be the one who goes into the chocolate factory. We want that sense of specialness that plays into our hope that we are the one who gets to have the magical twin flame experience or any other magical experience. And there is another big danger to this. The idea of the twin flame is to find this missing part of yourself, the other part of you that sort of is aimlessly wandering around the world just like you. From an existential perspective, there's a real problem with looking outside of yourself or to another person to complete you. That's a very dangerous paradigm. Because honestly, that's sort of part of the general philosophy here, that you and this one and this other person add up to one flame, which could imply that there's something lacking in your life until this person comes along. Good mental health is when a person feels a sense of wholeness and completeness within themselves. To spend a lifetime on a grail quest for that other part of your soul is a precarious quest. You got to remember your whole within yourself. If you meet someone in your life that compliments that, then great. But any sort of love model out there that has you looking for something or someone to complete you, that raises the stakes and the vulnerability to making those justifications that can presage a toxic relationship and are a classic part of cognitive dissonance. I know, I know some of you listening to this today think I'm horribly cynical. You might even think worse things about me and that's fine. If you have seen the ravages of narcissistic abuse and what it does to people's mental health, of watching people who once believed in themselves, doubting everything that they do, doubting everything that they say, feeling chronically confused, developing physical symptoms and mental health symptoms in the wake of being chronically invalidated, of social isolation due to shame and confusion, of internalized devaluation, of divorces that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and leave children carrying the burden of lifelong anxiety after a childhood of invalidation and gaslighting, then you know what? Yeah, you do become cynical. And when I hear these kinds of metaphysical meanderings about magical relationships or a romanticization of volatility, I see the danger of a framework that all but excuses bad behavior in a relationship in the name of a once in a lifetime platonic ideal. In my greatest wish for all people out there, everyone, everyone in the world would find the love that they deserve. Not a magical synchronous once in a lifetime, complete my soul, volatile, upside down, past life, metaphysical love story. But I hope for something a lot more simple for people to find someone respectful, empathic, compassionate, mutual, consistent, unconditional, and characterized by communication, laughter, compromise, shared values, growth, and above all else, a sense of safety. And some people find all those things I listed more than once in a lifetime. And sometimes you might even find the right person and still grow out of it, it happens. I just hope everyone has that happen at least once. 
twin flames and similar metaphysical models carry the risk of grandiosity, justification, scarcity, and decision-making guided by illusion and fear. Everyone, everyone deserves an extraordinary love story. Just don't let it burn you down. Some of the folks who write about twin flames will say, oh, sometimes what we're really trying to say is you need to become your whole self. And once you become your whole self, then the twin flame can happen to you. Trying to sort of build up the model of no, it's not about completing yourself with someone else, even though that's what a lot of it says, but you need to become whole yourself. Whole, not whole, half whole, 10 times whole. Volatile relationships are simply not healthy. Again, careful with those twin flames. And as your mama always tells you, don't play with fire. Thanks again.